So, hello, I am uh, I'm Kapil Verma. I'm a developer entrepreneur based in Delhi. Um, Kapi Day 89 is my internet link. Okay. Um, back in Delhi, I'm involved with two startups, Newsjam and uh, Blazer Train. Newsjam is a platform for live music industry. Its version 1 is out uh, and you can check it out. And we have just done with the version 2. Probably by the end of this one, we'll be out with that. And it's, I'm pretty confident that it will do a lot of awesome stuff. And uh, Blazing Trail is a startup focused on building solutions for enterprise companies. We have one product out right now. It is a warehouse management system which is uh, being used in two warehouses in Delhi, uh, near Delhi actually. And uh, it's refined. It's also in its final stages, this product. And it's refined as per the feedback from the operators of the warehouses. So, my history with Angular. I'm a front end developer by accident. I mainly code. On the server side, I mainly deal with uh, data, building extensions to warrants, figuring out better ways to work with data, and uh, servers, scaling, and etc. etc. But it turns out that all the things that are important in programming uh, good APIs, like dependency initialization, for example, design patterns again, uh, kind of carry, kind of afford. They kind of code very well to Angular development and uh, as a result I have been working with for a year and I have done a lot of stuff using Angular. So Angular and client side architecture. This uh, is how I see client side JavaScript applications. They need to interact with several different components uh, like the, your application API, uh, some other external APIs the window through which the user interacts with your application and the URL bar, which uh, it's a pain in the ass to do with it, but it kind of provides a sync, it provides a URL for your application. And uh, uh, client side JavaScript application exchanges state data with all these things, and it, it's the architecture of this application should be such that, that according to, uh, suppose it's in state A, and then it interacts with any of these other components and according to those interactions it reaches state B and then it should behave in that state B in such a manner that uh, its history basically uh, should not affect its behavior in state B. What I'm trying to say is that this client side applications kind of have a heavy requirement of being stateless and a simple, to put in more simpler terms of you know what I mean is that basically suppose a user enters URL slash foo in that bar and that should re result in the state of the application that, uh, sorry, the state of the application that results that comes up when the user enters URL slash foo in the URL bar should be the same as state achieved when the user has started the application from URL slash bar and through several different actions has made his way to URL slash foo. I hope uh, that was clear. Yeah. So, and this is what I tried to achieve before I began using Knockout, which I found to be not enough for client side apps. And uh, then using Backbone, I which I tried to develop the approach. And before I'm like I kind of resorted to not using frameworks at all, I stuck with RequireJS, jQuery, and Backbone or event for most of the things. And our rest classes completely in JavaScript. And the second part actually helped me a lot with writing client side JavaScript and also the node stuff. And this is actually a link to a pretty good talk which, de uh, uh, which discusses this type of approach of JavaScript development. Uh, check it out. And that star basically means I'm not doing it. So, Angular. I started working with Angular in February 2013. And within a week of playing with it, I kind of realized that it is different than the previous frameworks that I have tried. Yeah. It's tagline from its website. It is HTML enhanced for web apps. That's the tagline now. When in 2013 when I started Angular, it, the tagline was super heroic MVC framework or something, but it's not really a framework. It's just this. This is what Angular is. This is its most powerful feature. This is the thing that helps it build well architected client side apps. <laughs> Um, in my opinion, it has cracked the problem of client side development by bringing the dog to life. And uh, so now, again, 
This is the architecture that I try to achieve with Angular. And now I'm going to go into how, uh, you know, I kind of try to do that. So, yeah, step one before anything. Uh, in order to build proper client side applications with Angular, you need to forget that NGPU exists. Exists because, uh, well, the reason is deep because it kind of puts a global state in on the template that is being loaded for a specific URL in your application, and that is bad. That kind of hinders your uh, the growth of your code base in a scalable manner as your project size grows and as your requirements increase. And after that, well, since the talk is good, uh, and since the talk is engineering complex applications here in Angular and require this, and I also since I use require this, well, you need to set up the controls module. This is the link to a GitHub repository of an application whose API and UI created yesterday. And let it load. Actually, I don't think it will load because of slow internet connection or something. So if you guys are too many people didn't get to it. Set up the controllers. Hmm. <laughs> this is a lot. Just a second. Yeah, so all the controllers. Basically, you create a module for your application controllers, and then you register all the controllers that the application uses for that. Then you set up your directives, the services, all of them have the same structure. The link to the repository is there at the end of the talk, and you can check it out after the talk. Load the templates, basically use require this text plugin and all cast the templates beforehand. So that requires this is able to build the templates into the minified application file and set the router configuration. Now this is something that I think is different from most Angular developers. I built this small tool called R, which basically kind of gives me the functionality of uh, underscore dot extend and through it I kind of set up different configurations on different routes. So if you look at this page, the URL page visit tags, it has the title visit tags and the panel template after visits. And this uh, this route basically has this configuration. And when the application when this application loads up this route, it uses this configuration to set itself up. So basically that's a router config and then you have to initialize the application model. This is the standard stuff and you can find this and except the router part, you can find most of that in any Angular JS required JSC. So this is the really standard stuff. Then what's important to do is to wrap all of your DOM in a controller. Um, what I mean by that is that in your index.html, you need to have the whole thing under the control of a master controller so that basically you can control everything that is happening in your application via your own code in your controllers in JavaScript. And then you control the sub templates, the sub parts of your DOM using the router config and your controllers. So, for example, if you look at this master controller, it looks, it looks this body template. Body temp, uh, you can check out the flow later. Body template basically looks like an app or login template. And if you look at app controller, we have this dev over here, which encapsulates the whole application and the application panel. And this dev over here is controlled by an app controller. What this app controller basically does is that whenever the route changes, it reads the panel template defined on the route, panel template configuration defined on the route, and sets that up as the panel template over here. And this causes the appropriate panel basically to load up. A simple example for this would be, yep. so if you go to manufacturers, as you can see, body template over here is loaded inside over here, and this contains this DOM which is controlled by the app controller and for the route manufacturers your router config tells it to load the panel template app.manufacturers which is basically app slash manufacturers.html which is loaded over here 
And over here you have a template code which is controlled by controlled by another particular controller and has all the data. It gets all uh, it does the interaction uh, using the API service with the application API it gets the data and loads it loads it up in a scope variable, which is then used to display all this stuff. And uh, this approach is pretty powerful because you can use this to uh, go into any level of your hierarchy uh, which you need. So, for example, over here we have for manufacturers we have different widgets, which is uh, if you check out the URL, that's like inside uh, this view is loaded differently, uh, loads up different data for different manufacturers. And uh, how do we set that up? So, again, router.js, that depends your configuration to be loaded. So, if you check out this route, manufacturers, manufacturer ID, widgets, we set the panel template over here to have the manufacturers per panel. And we take a sub panel template, which is manufacturer widgets. And if you check out the panel template, it just basically equals manufacturer name and loads up the sub panel template over here. And the sub panel template for widgets basically is again very similar to any other table view in this application. And uh, so I hope you guys understood what I meant by this uh, avoiding NGView and using router configuration to load up different nested views in your application and controlling them via the controllers that you need to control them. I need a yes to move forward, please someone say yes. No? Okay, so someone asked me a question right now. I didn't understand why NGView should not be used. Because uh, NGView kind of, if you use NGView, that would kind of replace only the requirement for this. Uh, sorry, this is wrong in this row question. Yeah, that, you can only set up one view to work per round with NGView, right? The hmm? yeah, it doesn't allow nested routing. Yeah, it doesn't allow nested views also. You understand? So, you can, so, you can use ng includes and do the same thing. Yeah. Inside but, my template, I can use ng But how do you decide that for this particular route, the parent view has to remain the same, but the uh, you know, so child views have to change? How do you decide that? While you're doing this controller, I would do it in another controller. Yeah. Uh, but you would go in the configuration via something. And that something has to be the router because that kind of uh, hooks into the URL that has been loaded. Plus, there is also something called Angular UI runs. I don't know. Yeah, Angular UI runs there, but uh, it's like if you avoid NGV, you get the same functionality. Actually, better than that, though, if you just use object or extend because of the listing, uh, for example. Um, so it's like this: that it's something extra. If you can avoid it, it's better for your application. It's better for your code base. So, it's only for nested views. This one is about the shit use and that uh, basically it may look like that it's only about the shit use but what it allows you to do is to really bifurcate your application into different views which are controlled by different JavaScript controllers uh, as per you need them and that allows you to build very tight UI interactions in your applications. By very tight, I mean... So, well, for example, I'll just show you something. This app was made on the day, this is something better. Well, uh, this is the admin panel of the current version, version sorry, version 2 of Nivisha. I'm kind of loading videos of a particular of you boy. And I have a YouTube player working over here. I can either load new channel, videos from this channel and, or I can upload those videos. And as they upload again, I can kind of. Because I've uploaded these videos before, they're paid. Better or worth it. So, can we make this? So, I hope you understand. Interactions like this, and moreover, this thing is a direct app. Yeah, and the, if you take this approach of bifurcating your views as much as you need, uh, the directive kind of come out of your application code. You don't need to think about them separately, especially if they deal with your business logic. Like, uh, 
this thing was mainly uh, of built over here. Like if I need to upload photos for a particular event, I could upload it over here. And from there it became a director of its own, which I can now plug into different things that have photos. And uh, it's probably so yeah. Anything else? Yeah, very good, not the mic. I think that people are starting to That's a very noisy mic, and I think we can hear him just fine without the mic. Oh, so, should I continue? Yeah, much better now. <laughs> 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 so, yeah, that's uh, the main thing about building. Well, that's like the main thing. And uh, some other tips to make your life easier when using Angular is using $Q to integrate non-Angular async JavaScript APIs with Angular. A simple example of this is the file reader, which I'm using over here. It just loads up the preview of this image inside this box. Uh, I will save it the receipt. And how do you do that? So it says. Yeah. So you just use dollar q and dollar root scope dot apply and uh, just read about promises API and well understand promises and integrate things that uh, are asynchronous. <laughs> and don't work with Angular directly into your Angular application using dollar cube. What else? Sorry. And you can't live without directors, but you can use them to make your life easier. Like, uh, for example, if you again look at this particular thing, well, this was one example. But this whole code base was easily just copy pasted inside this thing and uh, used uh, as it is. However, come making it into a directive allowed me to avoid that copy wasting and just use a simple HTML tag, custom HTML tag to, well, yeah, reuse this thing. And, uh, yeah, there's several different, all the DOM interactions, tiny small DOM interactions that you need to make, which are just UI specific and don't deal with your business logic, all that stuff can be put in your directives. Like, for example, this box over here is a page to only thing and this simple tedious stuff kind of can be abstracted away and put in a directive and then used in different places. Uh, the photo holders that you saw over here are directives again. These are directives. Basically they need something like, I'll show it over here. So yeah, these are directives and they need a valid source in order to load an image into the source. So that's really all I want to say about using oh yeah, that's the link to UI and API code base. And that's all I want to say about architecting complex applications with Angular JS. Uh, and I would like to mention again that even Though it, this might seem trivial, trivial that you know this using just ng include and avoiding ng view to bifurcate your views into different function, uh, bifurcating your views and controllers into different files in order to you know, distribute the functionality. But this is something that really is the key to this whole thing to building use applications with languages without really ever falling into you know architectural backlog or something without ever letting the app become something that trusts itself under its own weight. So that's it. The end. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, so I'll show that to you know. I don't know what required this is. You don't know what required this is? Okay, so basically it's something, it's an asynchronous module loader. Uh, if you check out this index.html, I have just loaded one JavaScript file over here, this required of JS, 
thing. And uh, then in my, I tell it that my application is start over here in app slash main. And over here I kind of initialize my whole Angular application using these few files, this directives, controllers, services, templates. And this also allows, allows me to build uh, all of this JavaScript and HTML into one single file, which is obviously what you need for production purposes. Yeah. This is, somebody asked that, uh, you know, how do you work without front end for Angular? Yeah. That's the solution for that. So. Is require.js primarily built for Node.js that has been adopted into the browser? No, require.js actually was is older than Node.js as far as I remember. And uh, its primary purpose is to load modules on demand. But what I find best uh, what I find best about it is that I can just put this over here and then forget about adding any more script tags in my while programming JavaScript so that I don't need to make any context switches when adding new files or things. So templates, yeah. You have built a fairly complex <coughs> Angular application with a lot of files, so controllers and directives. I haven't really seen a need uh, in order to dynamically on-demand load the scripts. Why not load everything at the same time? What exactly? Yeah, I loaded it. This, like I said, then I uh, require this as value is one. Well, I'm used to it first of all, <laughs> and then building things with it is very easy. Mm, this is a bash file which basically compiles all of uh, this over here. Compiles all stuff that requires is built into one single file. Okay. So, 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 yeah. so what I found required is great for is it allows you to define what files you need to load before a particular JavaScript goes. So the ordering of dependencies is what required is <coughs> in order to the building and the minification and everything. It automatically given a target file, it figures out what the dependencies are, loads yeah. them and puts them in on. Then when you have a lot of third party dependencies, that's you yeah. So if you put the if you put the scripts in HTML file in the same order and use the grant file in order to yeah. use them the same thing, which is about the same. Yeah. So these some pages don't require some pages files that you can exclude any other Well doing that with Angular is kind of difficult because of the way Angular works. But yeah, generally without that you can have that easily. But there is a project which does require JS plus lazy loading of controls. So yeah, for it's it, like, it is possible. It's yeah, yeah. It's like uh, there's something called dot dot apply or scope dot apply which is called on Angular in order to evaluate what all data changes have happened and update the DOM accordingly. And uh, if you are lazy loading your controllers, you need to add that dollar scope dot apply in the end of your controller declaration in order to have that thing. But it's really uh, too tedious a thing if you're working in a team and the different people to remember. Um, that's the thing. Well, unless you are working at Google, <laughs> it's kind of involved with the main thing. So, yeah. Any more questions? Nothing.